All right, thank you for staying with us. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on the front page of Nigeria newspapers. And I begin with the blueprint. The major story here says fuel subsidy removal. Divided labor unites as TUC, that's a trade union congress, the NLC, Nigeria Labor Congress, begin indefinite strike October the 3rd. And some writers here say federal government grandstanding for stalling avenues to peaceful dialogue. Uh, we are meeting your demands. Masses uh, stand to suffer. Federal government reps beg. A civil servants call for calm over the listing of uh, 17,000 workers. Right, uh, you find uh, the details of the story on the front page of uh, the Blueprint newspaper. And to the front page of this Nigerian newspaper, uh, still talking about uh, the indefinite strike called by organized labor. No going back, say NLCTUC. Begin indefinite strike, nationwide strike in seven days. Urge Nigerians to stockpile foodstuff. Uh, rep speaker begs organized labor against uh, down tools. And on the top corner of this Nigeria newspaper, we see Naira reaching an all-time low trade at 1,000 Naira per dollar at the parallel market. And then uh, another story here says, FCT teachers set to suspend strike as weaker resolves NELGE crisis. Joint task force clear scavengers then in Mabushi in, uh, the, in Abuja. All right, you, if you want to know more about these stories, you can pick up this Nigerian newspaper to find out more. All right, we move now to the Punch newspaper. Indefinite strike. OPS kicks as labor vows to shut down airports. Others uh, Tuesday. Federal government, labor leaders, meeting holds Tuesday. Tinubu to unveil workers' package October the 1st. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, others one of massive economic losses. Government foot dragging, foot dragging on workers' demands. NLC uh, speaking there. And uh, some stories here. Cardoso to clear dollar debts, suspend intervention loans, fuel, care, others imports gulp for $46 billion annually. The federal government is saying that. All right. More details on the front page of the Punch newspaper. So the Guardian newspaper now. More factories, businesses may shut down as diesel hits 1,100 naira per liter. More factories, uh, businesses may shut down as diesel hits 1,100 naira per liter. And there you find the infograph <clears throat> on what manufacturers spent on alternative energy between 2016 and 2022. In 2016, it says uh, the manufacturer spent 129 billion naira. In 2017, 117.38 billion naira. In uh, 2018, 93.1 billion naira and let's move to 2022 it says 144 uh 144 billion naira was spent on alternative energy uh, by manufacturers and uh, under that story Cardoso is saying how cbn will stabilize naira slow down inflation all right all the details on the front page of the guardian newspaper to the leadership newspaper now, the major story here says, a rumor of fuel price high unsettles motorists, commuters. Scarcity hits Lagos, Ogun, as long queues resurface. Fuel stations shut down operations. We are committed to energy security. NNPCL is speaking. And uh, you see another story here. I will abandon MFLA's policies, says CBN Governor Cardoso. And on the top corner, we have hardship. Labor begins indefinite strike on Tuesday. Tribunal affirms Yahaya as Gumbi Governor. All right. And to the first news newspaper, Senate confirms Cardoso deputies as 259 CSOs kick petition to Nubu. The writers say president's action violates CBN Act. 
Coalition questions Cardoso, deputy's academic qualification, experience, competence, integrity, alleged one deputy governor under EFCC probe for fraud. All right. And uh, another story here says, more bad. A coroner's inquest into the cause of uh, death begins Friday. As Naira Mali says, I'm returning to Nigeria to clear my name. I know that will come as... Uh, uh, music to the ears of a majority of Nigerians who have been calling for justice for Mobad. And then again, we hear another story here. Uh, impeachment, Ayeda Tiwa's kinsman protests say deputy governor can't be removed. All the details of this story on the front page of the first news newspaper. Kemi. Business day is next and the lead story <coughs> is on the... The new CBN governor, uh, Yemi Kadoso, who is proposing a CBN reset, that's how he calls it, but it comes, according to Business Day, as uh, Naira, the Naira plunges to a 1,000 against the dollar. Of course, uh, the CBN governor is also quoted as uh, proposing to pull back from, from an aggressive development finance as well as um, to ensure transparency, compliance, and collaboration. He also says zero tolerance for that there will be zero tolerance for breach of CBN Act. More uh, headline stories on this day. Uh, the new Minister of Communications and Digital Economy is um, speaking rather vocally about his ambitions for the country's digital landscape. That's on uh, the top right corner of Business Day. But uh, then all these ideals uh, he's speaking about are said to be coming against um, old threats. All right, you can get details there. Still on this day, manufacturers grapple with 272 billion naira on sold goods as inflation bites. That's uh, on the bottom right corner. Let's check out the nation. Uh, the big story there is still on uh, the uh, new CBN governor who is coming on board as the 12th helmsman of the Apex Bank uh, of Nigeria since 1956. And he uh, told senators so many uh, things that he would be doing now that he's, he's on board. And of course, Nigerians uh, really looking up to him to see how he will indeed tackle inflation, uh, the Naira, and Forex crisis. Obaseki asks Shwaibu, his deputy, in that's uh, the governor of Edo State. It's on the top left corner of the nation. Obaseki asks Shwaibu, his deputy, to drop ambition, a governorship ambition, this ahead of the 2024 uh, election in the South-South State. Tinobu Oke's purchase of 12 attack helicopters as army aviation gets boost. Uh, these and more on the nation. Also, we check out Nature News now. The biggest story there reads, CBN partners IMF on climate change impacts mitigation through fiscal policies. Uh, that's on the Nature News saying that CBN partners IMF on climate change impacts uh, regarding mitigation through fiscal policies. Also on the top left corner, firewood charcoal sellers applaud government's ban on tree cutting. It comes just as environmentalists differ as Tinubu pushes for African independence on climate change mitigation, all this and more on Nature News. Looking at uh, Nigeria News Direct now, the works minister is quoted as saying on the Nigerian News Direct, as, uh, raising some concern as to why Tinobu's administration may fail, lamenting no existing <coughs> federal roads can last seven years and urging the president <coughs> to review procurement system. That's the biggest story there on Nigerian News Direct. Uh, some more uh, stories there that made their way to the front page. Stock market suffers 0.34% drop, losing 126 billion naira amidst selling pressure. And uh, let's quickly, final paper this time is uh, Daily Trust. The big story there is still on the Zamfara Varsity abduction. Daily Trust says survivors have gone on to narrate their ordeals in the hands of bandits. My son, granddaughter, 
More than 50 others abducted. This is according to an eyewitness. The varsity is said not to be fenced and is poorly policed, yet it has been attacked. Or it, the attack is the third on the institution. And uh, these are really interesting and concerning uh, issues that we will uh, po possibly talk about uh, today. Leah Sheribu, uh, recall Leah Sheribu, who is still in uh, the detention, so to speak, of kidnappers in the Northeast. She's said to have dumped a first husband and remarried another ISWAP commander. Vice President uh, Shetima is saying economy will pick up in 15 months. And finally, yet another quote uh, from Naira Mali, former manager of the late Mobad. He's saying now, the man in the eye of the storm, that circumstances surrounding Mobad's death will be revealed in due time. Veronica. Of course, and uh, indeed, Nigerians are waiting with bated breath on uh, what's cost uh, Mubat's dead. But that's not our focus at this point. Uh, the unfortunate incident that happened in uh, Federal University, Guso, uh, Zamfara State, is what we will be focusing on because we see from one of the papers uh, this morning that uh, that's it the Daily Trust that survivors are giving account or narrating the ordeal in the hands of bandits. And it's been reported that um, the school is not fenced as it is. We had a guest yesterday talk about this. And he also alluded to the fact that uh, the school is not fenced as it is and that where it is located, um, the, it's, it's not quite secure. There's no police post uh, close to the school in that environment. And uh, I was reading you know, an account of a student that said, talked about how these persons, you know, broke into uh, their hostel, you know, attacked them, picked uh, a majority of female students who were said to have been 24 in number and uh, taking them. And this is the third time this year that the school is being attacked. Kidnappers are attacking the school. And sometime in June, the students actually protested uh, these uh, um, kidnappings that they have been witnessing. And the question on the lips of some Nigerians is, um, what really, what were the measures being put in place by be the state government or the government, the federal government to addressing this issue? Yes, we know that uh, the president gave marching orders for <clears throat> the rescue of the students, and we saw some of them being rescued. <clears throat> but then, is that enough in itself? That's the question. That is the big question, especially when one uh, considers the plight of um, you know, the loved ones who can, who cannot even begin to expectedly imagine what ordeals their loved ones may be facing uh, in, in captivity at the kidnappers' den. And of course, when one also considers you know, the unimaginable things that you know, could even befall uh, these these captives and um, you know this this is a a, a high institution you know uh, it, it's it's really something very concerning and uh, you know there are so many factors it's Zamfara State Zamfara State is, has has really you know been reeling so to speak from uh, the impact of of kidnapping it's, mm. it, it's such a thriving industry uh, there the the new governor has also been quoted to say that uh, he will not um, you know, negotiate with, with the kidnappers. He has been talking tough. And yeah. uh, this is um, something that uh, it is very, very appalling indeed. And um, we just hope that so much can be done that has not been done before. And uh, there's also the call of perhaps this industry will not thrive as much if people, because these are... They are not ghosts, as have been said. They yeah. are, we're not talking about ghosts. These are people who live among people like themselves. And uh, so there has to be a, a way to crack this. There has to be a way for the government to regain its trust. Because yet again, we are faced with a trust deficit problem that, mm. um, that needs to be addressed if we are really serious about tackling this, this head on. Because um, there's also another issue of this terrorist or these kidnappers have gained so much popularity or so much, well, would you even blame the residents if the 
uh, kidnappers, you know, promise to protect them if they give them, you know, a particular uh, stipend every month, if, if that is what they can get to be sure that they would be safe. Can we really blame the residents, you know, who now seem to be doing the bidding of the kidnappers? Where is government at this local local level? The people, because from the statement made by the guests we had yesterday, there is no uh, police post, meaning that they, the people cannot see any form of uh, security personnel, so to speak, that they can perhaps communicate with, speak to, and that could give them some, some level of confidence to say, okay, we can relate with you. These are the people that we you see invading our community all the time, coming to the school to uh, attack the school as it is. There is no police post. There's no security presence. How are the people going to address this matter? Who will they speak to if they cannot feel some sense of government presence through the presence of uh, perhaps a security post in that uh, community? Then why would we build a school? in that kind of environment, knowing how porous it is to attacks as it is. So what measures are we putting in place now to addressing uh, this issue? That's the next question as that is on the lips of a lot of Nigerians. How will the state government liaise with the federal government to address this matter of kidnapping in that school in particular? We'll have to leave the conversation here now.